Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam, and on this channel, I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully, it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about POF Plus yeast and how they can introduce more PT flavors into your whiskey to make it more scotch-like. Let's get started. So what are POF Plus yeast? POF Plus is how I refer to it. Uh, it's also a term that sometimes comes up in the brewing industry or the brewing hobby world. So POF Plus stands for Phenol or Phenolic Off-Flavor Positive. So what's this mean? It means yeast can convert certain compounds found in malted grains into phenols. And it's considered an off-flavor in most beer types, which is why it was coined as off-flavor. So what are the, what's exactly happening? These yeast are taking what are called hydroxycinnamic acids from grains and turning them into phenols, which typically have medicinal, smoky, and bandage-like flavors. How are they doing this? Well, the yeast that are classified as POF Plus have what are called the PAD1 and the FDC1 genes. These genes each express an enzyme called PAD1 and FDC. These are the enzymes that'll convert certain free hydroxycinnamic acids found within the grains and these uh, hydroxycinnamic acids are classified as a type of phenolic acid. So they turn them into these phenols. And just to note before I go any further, these hydroxycinnamic acids are also broken down into phenols during the charring process due to thermal degradation of uh, barrels that are used to age. So that's another source where they'll come from. But these hydroxycinnamic acids are as follows. So we have ferulic acid, paracumeric acid, caffic acid, and cinnamic acid. But what they turn into is very interesting. So when they go through this pathway, they go through PAD1 and FDC1, out pops from ferulic acid, you get 4-vinyl guaiacol, which has a flavor of cloves. From paracumeric acid, 4-vinyl phenol, which has the medicinal and bandage-like flavor. From caffic acid, you get 4-vinyl catechol, which has a smoky flavor. And then from cinnamic acid, you get a compound called 4-vinyl styrene, which really doesn't have any flavor. I'll also note that these last two aren't produced in any significant quantity. I'm not sure why that's the case. That said, these POF Plus yeast will have a difficult time doing this on their own. You know, if you're just making a beer, they can be produced enough that they can spoil the beer if you don't like those flavors being present in that beer. But in terms of significant flavor after distillation, it's my opinion that not enough is produced. And this is because a majority of these hydroxycinnamic acids are not free. They're not freely floating around. They're actually bound to tartaric esters, which themselves are then bound to either lignin or cellulose. So let's delve deeper into this topic. So like I said before, most of the hydroxycinnamic acids aren't free, or at least a significant portion of them aren't free. They are in fact bound to tartaric esters, which are then bound to cellulose, which can be bound to lignin, or the tartaric ester can be bound directly to the lignin. So what you need to free up these hydroxycinnamic acids is a second microbe that can create an enzyme called cinnamoyl esterase. This cinnamoyl esterase can come in and break this bond. So now you have free hydroxycinnamic acid. Unfortunately, our regular Saccharomyces yeast does not produce this enzyme, but there are a bunch of bacteria and other yeast that can produce them. This is a very short list of them. Bretonomyces is a yeast, specifically Bretonomyces lambicus is known to produce cinnamoyl esterase. And specifically, White Labs has a product called WLP653, which is a Bretonomyces lambicus, and it produces cinnamoyl esterase. It should work. I find Bretonomyces is kind of a risky microbe to use though, because it can go in other very different directions. One of them is a more fruity flavor, and the other is described as sort of a horsey or horse blanket flavor. That said, I said this should work because it is described on their website as having, along with horsey flavors, it also states it produces spicy and smoky flavors, which are characteristic of phenols. So I'm pretty sure that this product is producing cinnamoyl esterases, which is, you know, exactly what we want to happen. That said, lactobacillus, some species of lactobacillus are also known to produce it, specifically lactobacillus helveticus and lactobacillus fermentum. If you find a 
company selling these to, I would email them and ask if they either produce phenolic flavors like the horsey flavor or smoky or spicy, or just straight up ask them if they produce cinnamon oil esterase. The bacteria Pediococcus is also known to produce this. I couldn't find any specific accounts of it other than to say the genus is known to produce cinnamon oil esterase. The third one is a species called Oenococcus oen or O-N-E. This is a bacteria commonly used in winemaking um, for malolactic fermentation, but it also produces cinnamon oil esterases, and I found two specific products that do it. A company called CHR Hansen, which makes it's a European company that makes uh, wine yeast and bacteria products. And they make a bunch of other wine related products. They have two. One is called Viniflora Oenos and the other one is called Viniflora Simi. Now there is a Viniflora Oenos 2.0 but it does not make cinnamon oil esterase. So if you're looking for this don't mistakenly buy Oenos 2.0. Just the regular Oenos is what you want. It's also my understanding that Viniflora Oenos produces a lot more esterase than Simi does. I also found two companies in the U.S. that sell Viniflora Oenos in hobby level quantities. So I'm going to name drop these companies. Crush to Seller in Oregon and The Valley Vintner in California both sell these in a small package meant for a 250 liter wash. Now the product is freeze dried bacteria so you can always open it up, take some amount out, close the package back up, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge. At least that's what I intend on doing when I buy it. $18 from Crush to Seller, $22 from the Valley Vintner. I don't know how much shipping is, so it'll probably depend on where you're from. But these are two amongst probably even more companies that sell this species of bacteria, and specifically this product, which I have confirmed, does produce this enzyme, so it should work. As to how you would use these, any of these, what I would do for my first time, I would do your mashing, pitch your yeast, and then 24 hours later, I would pitch one of these things. That way the yeast has time to acclimate to the wash and even start to proliferate before it realizes there's now uh, someone else in amongst the wash with them and they start going into fight mode. You know, you could always pitch them at the same time or you could even pitch the bacteria first. That would probably also work, especially since most grain washes take at least seven days to ferment. There's a lot of time for both the bacteria or the yeast and your normal Saccharomyces yeast to start doing what they do best. Suffice it to say though, if you want to produce a whiskey that is more peaty, scotch-like whiskey, then you should be looking at a yeast, that a POF Plus yeast, one that produces phenols. An example would be Saft Brew T58. And then also look into a bacteria that produces cinnamon oil esterases. I've already created a list of a bunch of yeasts that are POF Plus. I'm going to be putting that list in the description. I'm also slowly working on a list of bacteria to co-ferment with, possibly other, other yeasts, but it's probably going to take a while because most of these companies don't advertise whether or not their bacteria or other yeasts produce cinnamon oil esterase. So you get these phenolic flavors, potentially from peated malt if you use a peated malt. Then you can get it from your yeast and grains from free hydroxycinnamic acids. Then you can also co-ferment with a, another bacteria or yeast to get even more free hydroxycinnamic acids. And then you can also get it from the charred hardwoods used to make aging barrels. This gives you a lot of latitude in how much phenolic flavor you want present in your final product, right? The more phenols you add into the process before fermentation, like with a peated malt, and then also before aging, like if you're using a POF plus yeast and or a bacteria to co-ferment with, the much more phenolic, peaty, scotch-like whiskey you're going to get. Before I end the video, I'd also like to thank my Patreons for their support, especially Chris and Linton. All your support helps me out a whole lot. Many thanks to all of you. But that's it for this video on POF Plus Yeast, sometimes known as Phenolic Yeast, and their co-fermenting compatriots. I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more, and have a great week.